Good afternoon. It's great to be here on this beautiful Sabbath day in this nice, cool building. I really appreciate that. I'm sure the gentlemen do with their suits on. Well, today is a Sabbath day, the day to worship our Father and to glorify Him by speaking about Him. And the time we live in is called the information age, the time when information was the gears for the economy. It started around the year 2000. It's also called the digital age, the computer age. We transformed from the, inform from the industrial age to the information age, and you can see how it affects us every day, from how we communicate to one another, one-on-one, -on -one, looking at our cell phones, looking at the computer screens all day, how we get our information from the media. It's a influenced us so greatly, more than we could ever probably describe in a few minutes. However, there's posi positives and there's negatives to this information age. Isaac Isamov is a Russian-American. He's a writer. He published and edited over 500 works. He's a professor of biochemistry. His statement was pretty profound when I looked up and did a little research on this. He said, the saddest aspect of life right now is that science gathers knowledge faster than society gathers wisdom. It seems like time is moving so fast and information is constantly changing in our jobs. I know if a mother were to leave the workforce to take care of her children and come back, it'd be like a new job. It'd be pretty challenging. So with information doesn't necessarily lead to wisdom, right? Just because you know a lot doesn't mean you could use that information wisely. So today I thought we'd talk about how we could make wise decisions. I've written down four steps to making a wise decision. Many of the youth today have all four de decisions to make. So here's, perk up. One area is the career we choose. Once we make that decision, it's hard turning that ship and go another direction. It affects the lifestyle, whether we keep the Sabbath or not. It's a big decision. The second one is our marriage, who we marry, how old that person is, how young, how smart they are, whether you choose to have children. The third big decision is where to live. Do you want to live in Cleveland? Do you want to live in New York City? The cost of living, the weather. However, the, the, the biggest decision most of us will make, either by being proactive and deciding to go forth or by default and saying it's not for us, is that decision to be baptized or not. That decision is a pretty big decision. It's bigger than any other decision we could make. So the first step in making a wise decision, I believe, is to go to God in prayer. We go to him in the right position in that prayer. We go with him our problems and struggles and in a position of not knowing what's best for us, perhaps, knowing that he knows what's best for us and we don't. We go to him in a humble state of mind, perhaps on our knees or in a quiet time. And in Proverbs 1, verse 7, Proverbs 1, verse 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So fear of the Lord is reverencing the Lord and putting him in the right position in our lives, that he is the guider. He's the one that tells us what's the best way to live our lives. We have talents. We all have talents. I don't care who we are. We all have the ability to use those talents in the best way to serve him. In Proverbs 9, verses 10. Proverbs 9, verses 10. Again, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge is of the Holy One is understanding. For by me, your days will be multiplied, and years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. And if you scoff, you will bear it alone. So we'll bear the consequences of not going to God in that first step of going to God in prayer. One prayer that Jesus Christ spoke before his crucifixion was in Mark 14, verse 36. Mark 14, verse 36. I'm going to turn there myself. 
me give you a chance to go there if you wish. It's a, kind of a prayer we'll go back to a couple times. So it's, I think it's really important. So we we want to mirror Jesus Christ in our lives, and he's the perfect example to mirror. So Mark 14, verse 36. And he said, Jesus Christ, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. The first sentence kind of struck me because I grew up in my 20s in the New Age idea where all things are possible. Think that you could achieve it, right? Well, the says in the first thing is we go to God in the first step of, of going to God in prayer is that all things are possible through him. And I thought that was very important to have that state of mind and that willingness to know, to go where he leads us. The second step in making a wise decision is seeking wise counsel. In Proverbs 13, verse 20, Proverbs 13, verse 20, he says, He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. So we have a choice who we hang around with. Remember in high school, you, you are who you hang around with? Yeah. I was that close to following that path. And thank goodness I followed other people onto college and improving myself the way and using my talents as best I could. So in the second step in wise, seeking wise counsel, we better go to that counsel with some pros and cons of that, let's say, career decision to be made. What are the risks? What are the rewards? When we get baptized, we're supposed to weigh the cost. We're supposed to weigh the pros and the cons. And, and I think that was very important to gather the information since we're in information age. There's a plethora of information to get it from. But I think it's here we're speaking about going to the elders of the church and speaking to people. If you want to be a mother one day, speaking to a mother that's been a mother for many years and who's happy being a mother and what they like about it. There's so many examples of major decisions in our lives that we want to use wisdom in the process of making those decisions. The third step in making a wise decision after we gather the information is to follow the Holy Spirit. It's that third part of Mark 14, verse 36, prayer that Jesus spoke was, I'll read the prayer again. I'll go back to Mark 14, verse 36. To read the whole prayer, Jesus said, And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, what I will, but what you will. So once we gather the information, what to do with it. And it's doing his will, not our will. And I know we're talking not about worldly wisdom, however, today. We're talking about spiritual wisdom. Spiritual wisdom to me is... The, able, the, the ability to discern between good and evil and following that path of good and being righteous. So righteousness is equal to spiritual wisdom. So we go to God in a, having a pure heart and not choosing that career because it's going to make us look good in front of our families or looking in front of our friends or choosing that trophy wife because it's good society says that's what you should do. It's going to him with a pure heart. And that's spoke about in James 3, verses 13, verse 17. We think of a wise person. We also think of Solomon when God came to him in a dream. And he didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for things for himself. He asked for what he wanted, what God wanted. James 3, verses 13 through 17. 
It says, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. So that first word or two in the 17th verse, first pure. We have to go to God being a pure heart and not being one of greediness, selfishness, earthly, sensual. And the fourth step in making a wise decision is make the decision. <laughs> make the decision and sticking with it. To recap, the four steps in making a wise decision is one, to go to God in prayer. The second is seek wise counsel. Third is follow the Holy Spirit with pure heart. And the fourth is make that decision. All of us need words of encouragement in, in this day where we're bombarded with information and distracted continually. I know that's one of the biggest issues probably today we have is being distracted. In Proverbs 19.10, I'll leave a word of encouragement. He who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will find good. May make wise decisions, live long and prosper. Have a blessed Sabbath day.